So like, <laughs> hi, I'm Stuart here with Cleaning Business Today. I'm with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. And we got Joe Walsh back with us uh, today, who hi, everybody. is spearheading a ground roots campaign to bring to light the economic uh, incongruencies in some of the legislation that's passed in the last couple of days and is uh, really, you know, bringing it to light, getting it in front of uh, media, getting it in front of uh, our lawmakers who really are in positions of authority to uh, make some changes to uh, get better outcomes for all of our benefits. So no further ado. Hey, Joe, uh, could you uh, bring us up to speed on what's happening? Yeah, so uh, I've been working on um, getting the story out about the Paycheck Protection Program and the limitations that it has uh, for uh, sp uh, small service businesses and hospitality businesses. It, it's um, particularly uh, problematic for those of us whose businesses have closed. And the, the short story is Tom put it so well um, when he said that um, the Paycheck Perfect, the Paycheck protection program combined with the new unemployment benefit of $600 a week, it creates an irrational economic environment for both the small business and the employees. So the math just doesn't work. And um, it, it makes it very challenging. I want to just preface all of this by saying, I'm not telling you to not apply for it. What I'm doing is I have actually applied for the PPP and it's in process at my bank. I'm communicating closely with my banker. Um, because even though it's got severe limitations, it is money that's available right now. So I'm still going forward with it, but um, I'm in close communication with my banker. So I just want to say that up front because some people have thought that I'm advocating to not apply for it, which isn't what I'm saying at all. Yeah. Roll, we were laughing about this yesterday. Roll the clock back. Six months ago, somebody would tell you that they would loan you two and a half months payroll on a two-year AM at 1% interest. I mean, you jump at that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, oh, yeah. By the way, there's a chance that some of that will turn into a, a gift, a grant that you won't have to pay back. <laughs> right. So it's yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a no-brainer from that from that perspective. But um, but what I'm talking about is the forgiveness provisions of it. So uh, the the math just doesn't work, and here's why: if you have closed and you've uh, furloughed all of your employees, or let's say the majority of your employees, maybe you've kept on a couple, like I've kept on one employee full-time who does my administrative and HR work and um, kind of acts as my business manager, you could say. And um, that person is still employed, but everybody else is laid off. So what's gonna happen now is they will soon start getting on top of their regular state unemployment, a $600 federal supplement. And in Maine, what that's going to add up to is somewhere in the region of 21 to $26 an hour equivalent for my employees that are staying at home. So some people have said, well, why don't you take the money from the Paycheck Protection Program and just put your people back on payroll, even if they're sitting at home. So that is all well and good in theory, but I'd be asking my employees to take a pay cut to get back on my payroll compared to what they're getting on unemployment. And so that puts me in a really awkward position in vis-a-vis uh, -vis my employees. And also if the intent of the legislation is so that we can all retain our staff and be ready to ramp back up when this, when we get to back to some sense of normalcy, then it's running counter to that because, you know, you're asking me to give my staff a pay cut to stay with me. So that's not helping me retain my staff at all. So, you know, there's that piece. And then there's the eight week period, which the way that the, the rules are written now, you have eight weeks from the time that you take disbursement of the loan to get to 100% staffing levels in order to take advantage of the full, of the full um, forgiveness provisions of the loan. And so um, that works great if your business is already open or you haven't had to cut back staff too much yet because you can just keep all those staff going. Um, or if you have higher paid staff and you can just put them back on payroll and it's still better than them being on unemployment, that works great. But in our case, with them taking a pay cut to be on unemployment and our business is already being closed, it's problematic because eight, in eight weeks, I really don't think it's realistic that we're going to be back to 100% employment. Um, there's just no way to know the effect that all of this is going to have on customer demand. Are you going to have 
are you know you're going to be able to get employees or are they going to be homeschooling their kids you know um, how are your customers going to be um, feeling about having you come into the home what are your customers pocketbooks going to look like and their wallets you know are they going to have the money to hire you back so i do know that some of my customers will have us back but i don't see us being at 100 percent. so for those reasons that's that's kind of the story that i'm um, been telling out there yeah, I mean, I think the economic part of this is probably the most underappreciated at the moment that, you know, it's all about health and, and, and the virus itself, and as, as it should be. But, you know, in a month or two from now, you know, I think that, you know, all the jobs have been lost just just right now, just recently, it was the last few weeks, so there's going to be a cascading effect. And, you know, there's going to be people that are going to be economically affected by this that, don't work in hospitality, don't work in the restaurant industry, but, you know, their vendors, suppliers, their jobs are somehow tied into that, that, you know, I, I don't think there's going to be many jobs out there that aren't going to be impacted by all of this economic uh, destruction that's taken place over the last few weeks. Yep. Yep. I agree. And that's going to last a lot longer than the virus, I'm afraid. Yeah. So, um, but I, I will say that there, there is some promising um, signs. So first of all, I just started talking about this publicly on Monday and uh, it's Wednesday afternoon at five and we had a front page story today in one of our um, statewide newspapers and we're, we have the interest from the major newspaper in our state, which is the Portland Press Herald. I just had an interview with them today. They want to cover the story. And um, also in Maine, we have a huge hospitality industry. Hospitality is our, I believe our number one industry or it's either one or two, um, but it's a very powerful um, industry trade group in the state. And they have copped on to this and figured out how problematic it is for their membership. And they have the ear of our US senators and representatives. Now, Susan Collins, of Maine was one of the four US senators that authored the original bill. So she's a really important person to have the ear of, and it seems that she's hearing this and is receptive to it. So, um, you know, I've been working on getting press coverage. The, the Wall Street Journal reached out to me today. And if, by the way, they call while we're on this call, I am going to have to hop off because if the Wall Street Journal wants to interview you, you pick up the phone. Well, can, you can just answer and ask them to hold, tell them you're already doing a very important interview. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> I'm, 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 doing, I, I'm, I'm in the middle of an interview with Cleaning Business today. You're going to have to hold. <laughs> um, but, uh, but no, you know, there's interest out there in hearing this story. Um, and, you know, really what it's all about, guys, is we all just want to be able to do our part to make this economic damage as controlled as possible and to make the recovery as quick as possible. And so all we're asking is for some simple rules changes so that we can contribute in a way that's economically um, viable and economically reasonable. So that's really um, what it comes down to. Have you talked about those uh, rule changes that you're requesting today? Joe, I know you did the day before yesterday, but I, I don't think you um, il illustrated those today. The four months or what was it exactly? Yeah, so what what uh, what I've been focusing on for the past 48 hours is just taking that eight week time period and giving us a longer period of time to um, to choose when the eight weeks or is or when we take disbursements alone. So um, there's a couple of variations on that theme, but you know, basically saying rather than make the time frame before June 30th, this really has to be stretched out until you know September or maybe the end of the year, you know, but I've been saying six months, like we need at least six months um, in order to, to have time to get, you know, ramped back up. Um, and it, an alternate change would be to just give some assurance that the money will be there so that we don't have to apply now. Um, and, you know, the reason everybody's rushing to apply is because we're told the money's going to run out. So it's like this mad rush because there's finite funds. And so, um, 
you know, that would be alternate, but I think it really needs to be a longer time frame. So that's the big thing we're pushing for. The, 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 the secondary thing that, that people are talking about is we've got to have a way to pay a differential so that our employees that are being asked to come back can make more than they would sitting at home. Otherwise it's just not, that's, that's where Tom's point about the, um, the uh, rationality of the economic environment, it's got to be rational. So it's just, it's irrational to expect our employees to come back to work for a pay cut. So that has to be addressed too, with some kind of rule changes. And that I know is being talked about at the national level. So would the <laughs> idea be that they would reduce that $600 to where it would be up to rather than on top of you know, the state benefit, or would it be giving employers additional funds to pay a comparable premium for that period of time? I'm, I'm pushing for a comparable premium, but uh, I don't, if you made the 600, you know, um, up to 600 instead of 600, that would, could potentially have the same effect. Um, But again, um, you know, or you could say their pay was up to their full pay instead of paying them more than what their pay would have been. Um, that would also do the same thing. You know, we could talk about a whole host of other economic problems it could create if all of a sudden, like 25% of the com- the country is making 50 grand a year. I mean, you have, I'd have big concerns about inflation. And I mean, but that's, I'm not even getting into that when I'm talking to the press and talking to because I'm not an economist and that's not really my wheelhouse. I'd leave that to somebody else. Um, it, it does have some, some, some interesting, you know, implications, but, you know, hopefully, hopefully the people that are uh, making these decisions uh, are smart enough to figure all that out. You know, as far as the money is concerned, the $349 billion uh, last night, the uh, treasury secretary, Steve Mnuchin, uh, made a statement that it looked likely that that money would be gone. And I haven't seen the news today, but supposedly he was going uh, back for another $250 billion to, to subsidize and uh, said if the, if the House would approve it, that, that they could have those monies in the, in the pipeline by end of day Friday. That's so good. There's a couple of ifs in there, but it sounds like it, they would be moving fast on that. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, that's that's... That's really good to hear. And, you know, um, so I think I had mentioned the hospitality lobby in my state is on to this and and has the ear. And then I have spoken with, I just got off the phone with someone from uh, uh, the SBA in Maine. And, um, you know, she wanted me to know that the SBA is aware, the SBA themselves are aware that the timing is bad. Like the, the timing provisions are not going to work. And it sounds like there's some scrambling happening. Again, nothing has come out publicly. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, myself and the other small business owners I've been working with to kind of push this story, you know, we're going to keep advocating and pushing until we see some kind of public, you know, statement that says that they've had some rule changes. But there's reason to be hopeful and to think that things are going to change because we got to remember here, the woman I talked with from the SBA was saying like, look, nobody made these rules to try and like, you know, pull the wool over anyone's eyes or leave anyone out. It was just hastily drafted and, you know, obviously wasn't really gamed out completely in terms of how this was all going to work out. And when, when they drafted it, it was two weeks ago or a little over two weeks ago when we thought maybe we would be out of the woods by June 30th. And now that's just looking way, way less likely. So, right. You know, I saw, you know, it's interesting. You mentioned, you know, like it's an election year and there's a lot of people in, in, in Congress that are going to be running. And I saw a poll yesterday and there was a lot of, a lot of uh, divisiveness back in 08 when TARP came out and all, all the, uh, you know, financial, um, you know, uh, stimulus came out that it was heavily weighted towards the banks and, and, and Wall Street and Main Street was kind of kind of left out that this time around, it's like over 90 percent. The, the, the poll was, you know, who should be getting economic help this time? And just normal households was the highest. No surprise. It was like in the in the 90s. Uh, Right below that, though, was small business. It was like pushing like 80%. And down, down on the yeah. other end, uh, 
for whatever reason, landlords was, was kind of a low number and banks was the lowest. So, you know, the people that are trying to be elected this fall are looking at those polls and hmm. they're going to be making decisions on, you know, where do the voters want to, want to, want to see this hope go? I'd love to see that poll, Tom, if you could share it. That's yeah, it was, uh, really it was on, it was a CNBC poll. Uh, it's probably on their website. I'll, I'll, I'll square Andrew and see if I can find it. Okay. Yeah, that would be, that would be great. Um, so I, I do have a draft letter that I um, need to figure out actually how to get to our membership. I know that um, in, in by our membership, I mean like ARCSI. Um, I know that, you know, some people are still open and, and everyone's affected to varying degrees by this. Um, and so, you know, it won't necessarily apply to everyone, but, but to anyone who'd be interested in um, sending a letter to their senator or representative to raise the issue with them and, and point out the limitations here. Um, again, I'm not advocating you don't apply for it, but you can apply for it and simultaneously advocate for changes to the rules and how it's, um, it's being distributed. You know, so, Joe, our distribution list and reach through cleaning business today is is really broad within the industry. I mean, we're going to be putting that in the newsletter. Or we're going to be, you know, making an article and putting it, you know, on the on the magazine itself. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get it out. But uh, you know, we can help you get it with some other associations too. That's that'll be easy. Okay. All right. Good. So I, I've got a um, the letter I have. I've had four lawyers look at it, and um. Not all. I wasn't. Was didn't set out to say let's have a lawyers look at it. But I just found I knew a lot of lawyers, so I've had a few lawyers look at it. I've had a couple of accountants look at it, and um, other just general business owners who are familiar with the with the rules and the legislation. Um, a couple of bankers have looked at it, and then um, also the local SBA person looked at it. I'd say it's been pretty well vetted in terms of it's clear and it's accurate. Um, but also John. Um, Oh God, why am I forgetting his last name? John North. Uh, he's the government affairs officer for ISSA. And now his name is escaping me. Um, does anybody know his name? Yes. No, North, North Northrust or North Duff? It, it, yeah, North Durft. John North Durft. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah. go. Sorry about that. John. Sorry, John. John. Um, so, um, John N. John N. So, um, so anyway, John took a look at it. ISSA is is not taking this track. Um, so, you know, to be clear, this isn't an ISSA thing. This is a, you know, small business owner. This is a Joe Walsh thing. Um, I, and I, I'm working with a bunch of all other small business owners. And you're, you're spearheading a grassroots movement to yep. move, you know, move the law in the right direction. Yep. Just trying this to get, get what all it all to pay attention to us small service companies. Um, but uh but in any event, um, John looked it over and, uh, you know, said, you know, language looks good. The and, and he understands what's going on. ISSA is separately. This is worth mentioning. They are pushing for provisions to get um, uh, supplemental worker pay funding passed. So they're working through their government affairs people to um, get, you know, uh, I, I don't know the, how it will come, whether it's reimbursable loans or whatever, but um, but funding passed so that we can pay the staff that are working differentials and they're focusing on hazard pay. So I just suggested to John, hazard pay is great. We also need to make sure they're making more than people that are on unemployment. Like they're, they're, they're both, they both have to happen. So ISSA is working on it, just slightly different. They have a slightly different take on the whole thing. So... Yeah, I know there was a lot of frustration. I've been on a couple of been in a couple of groups, and people are really frustrated and irritated and trying to figure out what to do. And I, I guess for me, it's less frustrating because I have had to make some fast decisions many, many times. And I would say about ninety percent of the time, they were not perfect. So it, it's rare that when I have to make a really fast decision and just do it right now that it comes out exactly perfect. So I feel confident that they're, like you said earlier, the intention is to help us and yep. to do what they can to make sure that we all survive this. So I, I feel confident that something's gonna happen <laughs> in yeah. our favor. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I do too. And that I, some people that I've seen since I've started doing this in the past two days, some people have, some people are taking the tack of getting very angry about it or, you know, just getting very confrontational about it. And I haven't gotten that way. And that's not my intent here. My intent is just to illustrate the issue. And the issue is one that is kind of hard to understand unless you are a small business owner, actually looking and gaming out the scenarios and running the models. So it's a matter of just figuring out how to tell the story in a way that the policymakers can understand. And, you know, and I believe in a way the public can understand because that's how we get public support for our own, you know, small businesses and our own industry. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not, you know, trying to place blame. It's just, this is clearly an oversight. We want to do our part, help us do that. It's really the tone I'm making. What, what the government's doing here is just so very ambitious. The magnitude of this, the amount of SBA lending that is taking place, like within this one week period is comparable to three years worth of SBA lending if you just look at wow. historical volume so and and now we've talked about the unemployment claims and like 10 million unemployment claims over the last two weeks and if you think about that the highest number ever on a weekly basis prior to that was 695,000 we've done 10 million, just being able to get 10 million claims on a computer over a two week period. So there's some, some really heroic things that are happening here, uh, you yeah. know, so the, so the oversights and the gaps in logic and, you know, the deadlines and the target dates that are being missed. I mean, you know, it's hard to get mad about that. I mean, you know, it's, you, you, just, you look at it all in context. It's, it's, it's understandable. Yeah. I, I completely agree. And that's why I've been, you know, the people that I talk to that, that are getting impatient or getting angry about it, I just try to counsel patients. I know it's easy to say, but it's like, you know, I, there are really, I, I like what you said, Tom, there are some heroic things happening. Like there really are. So we just need to put it in perspective. Yeah. And, you know, I've got a, uh, a friend who's in a, in a pretty important role in a, 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 a relatively small community bank, and they've never been an SBA lender, but they thought that this was, you know, from a community standpoint, this was the right thing to do. So they took this on and those guys are like working night and day. And the part of the story that's going untold is their regular business, the stuff that they do to really pay the bills is just kind of setting there languishing. So it's really creating a lot of, a lot of agency costs, a lot of dilemmas for, you know, a lot of the banks. I mean, I don't know about, you know, the large institutional banks, but there's a ton of, you know, regional and smaller banks that have jumped into this just to help. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're doing it at a, at a real economic cost because they're not in a position to take care of just the normal routine business that really pays their bills. Yeah. 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 I could see that. Uh, we have a couple of questions over here, comments too. Robin says, um, has the SBA stipulated how much can be paid above what would normally be paid um, to the employees? And can we pay bonuses to level set the unemployment benefits paid? I haven't read anything about that. Have you guys? I can take that. that. Okay, great. So Robin, you can pay your staff whatever you want. But the way that the math works for the loan is you're going to get 10 weeks, roughly two and a half months, roughly 10 weeks worth of um, payroll in the form of the loan itself. OK, now you can only use 75 percent of that for payroll costs, which is eight weeks of payroll, and you can get that forgiven. OK, so if you pay them more than the. Um, SBA loan, that's on you. There's, you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get that forgiven. That's just extra money you'd have to pay out. So that's where it becomes, it just, it's not economically rational to do that. You mentioned the uh, 75%, Joe, I guess when I was reading that, I read that as you had to spend at least 75% of that loan on payroll. But I read it as if you wanted to spend more than 75% on payroll, you could, but you couldn't 
said another way, you couldn't spend any more than 25% on it on rent and other non-payroll expenses. Uh, I might be wrong. I don't know. No, no, no. I'm, I, you, you are, I think I've seen conflicting things on that because that also rings true to me. I know the 25% maximum on non-payroll expenses. The idea is to create jobs. So they don't want you to take mm. that and cover a lot of operating expense and not hire people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's a, that's a finer point. I would need to get clearer on and just verify that I understand that completely. Um, and, but you know what? Might... Wait, this all this all this uh, commotion you're staring up is going to change all that anyway. It is, and I would also say that in most cases you're going to have to pay probably like a thirty percent premium at least to get your employees to be above what they're going to be collecting if they're unemployed. So that extra twenty five percent, I don't know if that would be enough anyway. So wouldn't be enough for me, not yeah. in my area, yeah. not for what we pay. So how does this also impact? Um, so they want you to keep the same number of employees employed. So if you are paying people more money, you'd also have to have more people. So it seems kind of like you might end up not even having any kind of a benefit there. <laughs> right? Well, right. It might not even work in your favor. Yeah, that's again, that comes back to the economic. Uh, the, it's like not rational. It doesn't the, the, the math doesn't work, I think, would be the short shortest way yeah. hmm. uh, what does kevin say i don't know if this is already common knowledge the local sbdc are available to help you navigate the applications and deciding the next steps to take so that's great it's an awesome yeah, yeah. that is really great um and greg says ohio governor mike dewine in ohio bureau of workers comp administrator Today proposed giving up to 1.6 billion to Ohio employers this spring to ease the economic impact. Um, wow, okay. that's a state level. Wow. That's, that's, that's really a, impressive. That's awesome. Wow, I wonder how that's gonna. Well, you know, Derek is always saying that Ohio is a front runner. So <laughs> that's awesome. No, states, yeah. states are a lot more fiscally constrained than the government. States aren't really allowed to borrow the way got, the federal government can. So that's that's really cool to hear that Ohio is doing that. States don't print their own money. No. <laughs> that, that, yeah. <laughs> that's it. And one I of, like to. One of, one of the uh, Fed governors made a statement a few weeks ago that we've got an infinite amount of money. If we need more, we just print it. Yeah. Makes me as nervous. I know. Yeah, it's, it, it, you, I know. you have to think about that for a minute. But uh, it, he was, uh, he said that in an interview. Yeah. So Gina is saying Ohio from last year's dividends. Hmm. Probably had a surplus, or something. Yep. Well, nice. Yeah. I was going to mention earlier too uh, when we were talking about that money, the funds being exhausted, the three forty nine billion. Uh, is that right, Tom? 349 billion? 349 billion, yes. Uh, I had received a letter from Bank of America, or I, I, you know, I didn't get it personally in my inbox, somebody else sent it to me, that they had already received applications um, over one, one, um, one, <laughs> I can't remember the number. <laughs> okay, let me go look. I'm like, I want to get it right. A big number. There's a yeah. lot of numbers in our head. Well, it was more than the 349. So I'm like, well, oh, and that's only oh. Bank of America. I'm like, one bank. Yeah. I think actually from just anecdotal talking to people that they got their stuff together a little bit faster than, than some of the other banks. They were they were taking applications on Friday from what I recall. Mm-hmm. They were accepting them. They just weren't able to push them out them them. But they, they had them all okay. queued up. Yeah. So and usually I'm, I'm, I have Bank of America, and usually I'm, like, not a huge fan. <laughs> so in this case, I've been like, all right. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. You're all right. <laughs> all right. I'll yeah. stop being like I am. Ugh. Yeah. Um, so did any, you um, – were you showing your letter, Joe, the one that you had had vetted? Oh, and 
I have it right here. Uh, I don't know if I, I mean, I can pull it up on the screen if you want. Um, but I mean, I, you know, I can also share it there. You know, there is actually a really good article in Forbes magazine that kind of helped frame this issue really, really well. Um, and when I saw it on, I think it was Monday morning or maybe it was Sunday, it kind of helped like coalesce the whole thing in my mind. Am I able to put that into the comments here so everybody can? You can. See? You can put the, Yeah, you can put any uh, link to a, a, a web page in the comments, and you can share your screen if you have a document you want to share. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I can show the document here. So this is th this will be what I'll be sending around. I'll just show that. Give me a second here. Just pulling it up. Okay. Oh, look at that. Getting better at this, Tom. Oh, look at you. Can you see my, my runner? We're, uh, we're, we're, we're adding it. Yeah. Okay. Is that you? Is that you, John? Oh, there we go. Look at the uh, <laughs> no. I don't think John's hair has been that long in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's a good point. Yeah. You know, I've got a picture somewhere with you uh, on a paddle board out in the Atlantic Ocean. We'll give you that. <laughs> you to put on get that. Uh, I'd like to see that, Tom. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is what it will look like, you know. I'm going to encourage everyone, read through it, um, familiarize yourself with it, make changes. I tried to keep it as general as possible for the general public. Um, Can you so blow that up a little bit, Joe? It's yeah. really small. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. Here, let me, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's better. So much better. Okay, so, you know, we want to let our senators and senators and representatives know that we are small businesses um, and that we've been excited about this. You know, we really want to let everyone know that we are not, we're not just whining and complaining here, we're, we're offering solutions. And so, you know, we've been, um, we've been excited. Um, but, you know, when we now that we have a more thorough understanding of the rules, it's apparent that there's major oversights. And so, you know, the effect is that um, we could have to take on a bunch of unforgivable debt and we risk losing our employees for good. So we want to sort of, this is why you need to pay attention to this. Um, here, there's a little story about why, you know, about closing my business. If you haven't closed, you could modify that. Um, and then just sort of introducing the issue with the eight weeks. Um, this paragraph here addresses the uncertainty and just that eight weeks is not enough time uh, to get back to 100%. There's a link here to the Forbes piece, which um, I will would love to send in the chat. It's actually a very a very good piece, sums everything up nicely. Hey, and, hey Joe, yep. um, you have a typo in there. Did you catch that? Oh, no, where? It says the recent piece informs sums it up nicely. It says Forbes. The recent yep. Keep going. So the word in should it, be it. in. Oh, Sums in. Nope. Yeah. Um, we look at that. Liz All has, the lawyers, Liz Liz has a, them yeah. that. <laughs> um, I can help it. Sorry. That's great. So, um, and then this addresses why we can't just pay them to sit at home because usually when you're talking to someone about this, it's the first thing they'll say, well, why don't you just pay them to sit at home? And so that's why that doesn't work. And then this is where um, uh, we, this is the ask. So, you know, what we're asking for. So we need at least six months from the time the government orders are lifted and uh, to start our eight week grant period. Um, and we're also asking for better guidance on the unemployment provision. So basically tell us how to interpret this so that we can start making decisions. We need to, we need a, a, a more clear regulatory environment so we can make good business decisions, right? Um, and then in short, uh, this is where Tom's um, phrase gets in there, which I love. Uh, we want to create a rational economic environment for small businesses so we can do our part 
This is a really important um, thing here. Guys, we're standing by and we want to help. We want to make this better. We want to bring our businesses back. And that's what the government wants us to do. So this is a classic, like, help us help, you know, help us help you, you know, um, kind of a thing. And just showing that we're, we're really want, we really want to jump in. So that's a really important piece. I added in a piece here about why this is especially important in Maine. Um, you know, that's, I would delete that for the national population, but, um, you know, in our state, more than 60% of our employment comes from businesses with less than 50 employees and hospitality is one of the top two industries. So it's always good if you can throw in a fact like that, uh, to, to like, this is why you need to care about this, but, um, that's, you wouldn't have to do that. That's optional. Um, and then that's it. And then I just, you know, leave with my contact information. That is, that is really, really an excellent, uh, piece of work there, Joe. It really is, Joe. And then I can't imagine that it can't be, it can't be listened to. And then here you've got the piece in Forbes. So it was actually written by this guy, Andrew, uh, Rigi or, or Rigi. And he, and I'm going to make this bigger. So Andrew Riggi is actually, um, he's like a lobbyist for restaurants and, and, uh, and nightlife venues in New York City. He did a great job summarizing the issue. So I'll send this around. Um, but, uh, you know, he did a really good job framing it and making it easy for the general public to understand. So in this case, you could take restaurant or bar and just replace it with service business or hospitality business, or, you know, I'm talking with a guy who owns a couple of um, really big popular hair salons in the state and he's affected in the same exact way. Um, and you know, what's really interesting guys who own hair salons know a lot of people. So like he's really helping connect wow. us with a lot of people. So that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll send a link to this um, in here. Yeah, and, that'd be great. You know, <laughs> it, another reason I'm hopeful, everyone, is just because the restaurant um, and hospitality lobbies nationally are really powerful and people really pay attention to them. So we're in the same boat they are. So I do feel hopeful that rule changes will be made in a timely manner here. So yeah. I can stop sharing. So if, if you feel that 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 uh, template is 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 ready to launch i'll go ahead and load that into uh the resources on cleaning business today where we can go to the uh, coronavirus dash downloads page and we can all download it and put it to work yeah yeah and so um, that would be to that would be to uh you know, state and I guess national, you know, lawmakers, I guess that could be to the media. We could be sending that to a lot of different directions, right? Yeah. So I actually am going to have two documents and this one's almost done. So when I get off the call, I can actually wrap it up and email it over to you, Tom, and then you can, you know, you can post it. Um, and I have a separate but very similar one that you could use to contact press. So if any of you are comfortable talking to the press, um, that would be, it's an awesome way to, um, to get the word out. And, um, so yeah, we can do both. I know some of you are really skilled at, at working with the press and getting PR. So this is a great time to shine and help advocate for your community. You probably know other, um, you know, you probably know other small business owners in your community. It's a great opportunity to really raise the profile of the entire cleaning industry by being a leader in your community. So I think it's, uh, you know, th there's an opportunity to lead here for sure. Yeah, I'm really excited to share it. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. You know, the, the professional companies, you know, I mean, this is, we've been, we've been working really hard for, for a long, long time to, could be differentiated in the marketplace and in the minds of the consumer, you know, anybody can clean, right? And it's like, no, it's a profession. Right. We're professionals. And, you know, we have real companies with training and insurance and all of the, you know, uh, benefits that go along with, with working with a, with a, with a professional uh, organization, professional company. And 
you know, the coronavirus, this, this crisis has created an opportunity. It's almost a reset that we have an opportunity to get that message across now because we're going to be heard. You know, everybody, you know, sees cleaning in a more valuable light. You know, they understand that, you know, there's a correlation between cleaning properly and reducing the chance of me getting this really bad virus that has the potential of putting me in the hospital on a respirator and killing me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's the, you know, so the more of us that, you know, are able to get out in front of this, you know, I, I, I do think it helps raise the, raise the profile of the whole industry. So, you know, we can, we can be winning a lot of, winning a lot of, um, winning a lot of support here. And, and I guess, uh, solving a lot of problems at the same time. So it's good. And, and we have this uh, additional opportunity for synergy with other industries that we typically don't have. Um, yeah. Professional industries, especially. We we typically are looked at as, you know, the ugly stepchild and no matter how much we scrabble, we don't, we don't really get heard. And in this way, we actually have a chance to really make something bigger and better happen, so it's really, really exciting. Yeah, and actually, and 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 um, to build on that point, Liz, it's like you know, I, I have to say that working with these other small business owners over the past forty eight hours, it's been really gratifying, and um, you know, it really does give you an opportunity to connect with, with other people in your community that you wouldn't otherwise have them, an opportunity to connect with, and you're connecting with them in a way that where you're leading and where, you know, you're coming out in front of it and you're showing that, look, this isn't just about me and my business. This is about, you know, all of us in the service and hospitality industry. And, and you're kind of all in the same boat. And so it's an opportunity to help recognize that. And, you know, we have to understand that there's going to be goodwill from that that's going to continue, you know, after this crisis is over and um, that can only help all of us. So... Absolutely. Um, all right. So I will uh, hop off the call and wrap this up so I can get it over to you, Tom. If you want to take that Forbes article, the the link to it, you can drop that in the comments. Oh, yeah. How, now, I, I feel like such a move here. But I, okay, because I have to do a private chat, right? Okay. Oh, I can. Yeah. I, I think I think I think I have. I, I know the article you're talking about. I, I, I can do that. You, you sent it. You sent it to me this weekend. Okay. Yep. When I just were, it when you chat. were when you were quote unquote offline. I know. Okay. This is funny. I talk, <laughs> this is funny. I talked to Tom. When was it? Friday, Tom? Or <laughs> it was actually you, you. You sent a text Saturday, basically saying you were shutting it down. You're going offline for 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 24 hours. I was like, I've had it. My brain's fried. I'm mush. I need to take 24 hours off. I'm gonna I'm gonna tune out and then. On Sunday, I started posting stuff on Facebook, and I got wrapped into a. Ugh. Anyway, I didn't unplug. Suffice it to say, he 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 made a, he made a kind of, and it, was, it was very thoughtful, and it really wasn't political. It was was you know based more on a point than 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 taking political sides. But it did happen to mention the president, so. You know, you, you, a lot of people started chiming in, and it was just, it just um, spun out of control. And I'm just laughing. Um, like, not oh. all symbols. You, you, you and my whole family. I mean, it was just so funny. Not all foibles need to be So funny. Everyone's laughing. <laughs> you know, I, I do, I, I do want to say too yeah. that I hope it comes across yeah. in the way that I'm talking about this. But you know, in case there's any doubt. I have no political motivations or anything, and I'm not I'm not picking sides here. That you know, I've had some people who have tried to pull me into their political battles as I've become a more vocal advocate for rules changes, but that's not what I'm about. You know, um, some people are trying to turn this into like some kind of campaign against a certain U.S. senator or against you know a certain policy or whatever, and that's not what I'm about. It's just th this is about helping our small businesses come out the other side of this as healthy as we can. That's really what this is about. So. You know, despite the waters I waded into on Sunday, you know, such Sunday, Sunday was probably well. It was fun watching. <laughs> but, but what what you're what you're doing here in terms of pointing out PPP the way it's structured 
with 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 the you know un, additional unemployment benefits is kind of like the perfect storm and it is economically irrational so i don't care what your political orientation is it defies objective logic so hopefully that point comes across regardless of of, of everything else and you know cooler heads smarter heads will prevail right right well, uh, yeah, so I guess I guess we've, we've done enough of this. So if the Wall Street Journal, when they call, you can go ahead and take their call now, Joe. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And, and um, thank you for having me on the call today, Tom and Liz. I, I appreciate you giving me the, the opportunity to talk today. And um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And the gratitude, the gratitude yeah. is all ours, Joe. You are. You are. Keep on keeping on, everybody. I have to say one more thing, Joe. Oh, okay. One more thing before you leave. Yeah. Tom and I were talking yesterday, and I know that this is not a, a political thing for you, but that you probably would be a really good person to be out there in the political realm because you are so balanced, easy to listen to, very inspiring. Um, just <laughs> we vote for you. We both said I, I vote for him. <laughs> well, we were joking. We were thank sure. you. Uh, thank you. I'm definitely not there yet. I'm having way too much fun in the business world right now. But thank you for the vote of confidence. I appreciate it. And if okay. I do run for something, um, I'll, make, I'll make sure you know about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> make that an exclusive here on Team Business today. We'll make sure that, that we're the first to uh, break that story. Oh, God. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Talk to you soon, man. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Joe for State Senate. See, we'd vote. We, we don't live there, but we would. I might even have to uh, move to uh, – I don't know if I'd move to, to Maine, but <laughs> – I'm not, you couldn't move to Maine. I don't know what would happen to you. You guys have to shut down your schools when it's below 50, right? I don't. I don't think you could live in Maine. Yeah, I mean, actually, it gets down in the, in, in the low 30s. They'll shut school down because kids don't typically have enough cold weather <laughs> clothes to, you know, wait for the school yeah. bus. Yeah, I, I have seen your son in shorts all the way through winter. So. I'm, I'm not thinking you could live in Maine. I'm not thinking so. Shorts and flip-flops. Yeah, it's too cold. Flip-flops. the same thing. Yeah, yeah you're flip-flops. Well, does anybody else have any questions, issues, anything else that they want to talk about today? Or do we have a, a shorter call today? Give people some time to go work on your businesses. No, Liz. You, I do have one thing before we close. Go ahead, Tom. No, I, I was going to just kind of reiterate something that you shared yesterday that I thought was really, really good. You know, we we started making the point yesterday that there's a lot of financial things that we're doing. We're 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 we're, we're, we're massaging our balance sheet a lot in terms of trying to get you know the government loans figured out and how all of that's going to work and. You know everything from from car notes to, to 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 leases to mortgages and all of that forbearance, so we can can save as much cash now as possible. At the same time, we really got to get to the point where we can start looking and at, at, at what's next and what do we need to do to be planting the seeds so we can can uh, hit the ground running and it start growing when 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 this thing starts to break. And you made a really good point, Liz, about planting the seed in the minds of, of, of our clients that uh, these are some things that are happening, you know, in the community, things that we're starting to see about the virus in terms of, you know, infection rates and things, you know, things look for anything that you can to start help getting people oriented to things might be looking better. So when it's time to really get out there and push our service and, you know, Mrs. Jones, you ready for us to come back and, and resume your regular cleaning? It'll be, well, of course I am because you've been subliminally telling me for the last two weeks that it's getting better and better. So why not? 
Yeah, it's time and now it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that needs to happen sooner is better for that message to start going out there. Yeah. I had another thought too, Tom. Go ahead. What's that, Liz? No, we've got a delay. Uh, I had uh, another thought um, for everybody. Uh, today, uh, in our mastermind uh, accountability groups, we did just um, just a quick um, SWOT analysis, just strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it was kind of interesting. Everybody's mind shift changed from, oh, this thing is exhausting. I'm tired. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? To, wow, okay. Let's let's be energizing and some some ideas and some new thoughts instead of just the same the same thoughts that keep going around and around. Uh, so just I- encouraging people to uh, maybe do just a quick SWOT analysis on your business and you know, twist your your mindset around just a little bit, get you in a better place. I like that. That's, that's well, a, let's what this like, yeah, maybe tomorrow, Liv, could, could you share with us a little bit about how that uh, how that exercise works and maybe, you know, explain what what swipe. I don't know if, it, you know, we, we might have have, have people that, that are on, on our uh, Facebook lives here that, that haven't ever had the pleasure of going through that exercise. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, and, I'm happy to do that. And you know, maybe we could could brainstorm it a little bit and, and illustrate a little bit. I think that would would, would be useful. You know, looking yeah, looking sure. looking oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, it, and really, the SWOT analysis does help you to look forward in a in a really good way. So yeah, uh, mm-hmm. what does David have to say here? Please analyze your questions about ensuring clients, employees, and other stakeholders like the community at large feel safe with your service, knowledge, and communications. Yes, thanks, David. That's great. Um, Greg, I see you're 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 asking about the uh, article that shows uh, coronavirus risks based on on types of jobs. I'll uh, I'll reach out to Matt. Matt Ricketts uh, has referenced that article before, and um, I'll, I'll task him to see if he can 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 get that for us because I'd like to I'd like to get that too. And if uh, he does, we'll go ahead and we'll post that on our resource page. He said it was in the New York Times. I did go and look, but I couldn't find it. I think it's because he said it was a little bit off from this. That this was um, part of the information in the article, but the the tenor of the article was is not exactly this. So. I couldn't find it. I did look, though. If anybody else has it, too, let us know. <laughs> oh, looks like Ellen's on. Hey, Ellen. Hey, I Ellen. see Dick saying hi to Ellen. Hey, Ellen. Haven't seen Ellen in a while, so. Uh, uh, yeah, so we were talking about some training. Uh, Tom, you were, Tom's working on a little bit of a training program with some certain sur- certificate of completion um, aspect to it and hoping to start that next week, Tom. Did you have yeah, an idea? We'll, Would it we'll be, be Monday? We'll be, or? Yeah, we'll, we'll, I, think, I think you and I need to put our heads together and work out a couple of details. Um, you know, do we want to do it all in one pop? I'm not even sure how long it can take. We could probably do it in as little as, as an hour and a half, two hours, or if we wanted to spend longer on it. It's easier to take longer than it is to do it shorter. Um, but oh, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking by, you know, Monday or Tuesday of next week at the latest, we'd be, be in a position where, where we could do it. And we'll have a, a test at the end and, you know, people complete the class. We can we can send them a you know, certificate of completion, something to show that they took it. Heather had... Heather had specifically asked that on that certificate of completion and that we have them completing it at for their company, for the company that they work for, which I thought made good sense as well. We could, we could do that. Yeah. 
Um, so if you have anything that you know you'd like to see addressed in that training, remember this training is specifically for your technicians, the people who work for you that are out there doing the cleaning. Anything that you want to make sure that they know, let us know about it. Send us a send us a note, post it in, in here, would we'll be fine on this thread. Um, but make sure we're aware of the info. Uh, Tom, it looks like we're um, slower today here. Uh, maybe, ooh, I don't know if you're going to come back here, I'm guessing. Maybe you still? Yeah, can you, can you see my screen, Liz? All right, well, oh, there we go. Yeah, I can. So our thinking is these are the questions that we want to answer on, um, on our training class next week. And again, this is not uh, the whole disaster recovery forensic cleaning, you know, uh, has, you know, hazardous material, deep clean work. That's, that's the GBAC class. And we can get that through, through, through ARC. They had a really, really great rate. I think it's like $49, uh, which is awesome. And I think as a class, I would encourage everybody to take, at least as, as business owners, you need to know what that's about and and how it's done and and what it takes and um, so when those when those when when you, when you get that phone call and somebody's asking you to go into a, a hot work site you know you know you know what the deal is and you can make a decision in terms of you know how you want to proceed from a from an informed perspective. This is more what we're doing next week is going to be more for you know. Post COVID nineteen world, where we do, you know, Mrs. Jones's house every other week. What are the special precautions we need to take to make sure that we're safe, she's safe, and we're making her home safe, and we're doing the things that we're supposed to do to, uh, you know, from a community standpoint. So, um, I can I can take this, I guess, and maybe just see how this works. And this is still a little bit fluid, but um, hey, how about that? Uh, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa is also saying one is how to train new cleaners. You know how to, how to do. I'm guessing ongoing training training while keeping that six foot social distancing. Yeah, that. That is going to be trickier, right? <laughs> How do you train people, especially in a bathroom, uh, like a, a fairly small bathroom? You're going to have to stand outside the door while you're talking to them and outside the door and talk to you. Yeah, that's a, like, definitely a concern there. Um, Kevin says, I'd like it possible to get in touch with someone else who is also involved in office commercial in a large metro area. We're in the New York metro area. So anybody that is um, in office commercial in New York, anywhere, it sounds like, um, hit them up here. And go ahead, Tom. Well, what, I, what I would do, Kevin, is go to uh, the Cleaning Business Today Facebook page and just post that uh, that request there. I mean, there's a bunch of people there. And I would like to go to some of the other pages as well. I would go to the Arxy page. And you know, just drop it in a couple of the larger uh, Facebook pages, and I'm sure that uh, you, you'd get some some responses. Uh, Tom, Lisa's asking, any ideas for online video training models with Q and A? Online video? Are, you, are we talking about material that's already? developed or dated like the core core videos that Sharon yeah. Timber puts out like that is that your time Lisa or, or are you looking um, to make your oh, own? The first, I'll respond to Kevin yeah good job Tom Um, okay, so Kevin, um, if the sound is back here, 
the first page he said was cleaning business today. And then he said also the RC page. Uh, Lisa is talking about to make her own, Tom. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. You know, we might get Matt to help us with that because he was sharing yesterday that he was making his own training videos. Maybe. Yeah. maybe and they're very nice. Do a how to for that. Yeah. I think Matt will and come back. His and help videos. Yeah, you know he will. I Matt, do. he's all about helping. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and his videos are very nice. I just saw a new one that he created yesterday. So they're, they're very good. Right. Mm -hmm. So Tom, it's the one. I have, did you post your link yet? Your cleaning business today link? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. It is time. Bang. Here's cleaningbusinessdoday.com. Right. Over here to the right is where we subscribe. And if we go to coronavirus dot dash rather downloads. I think I would get be able to get that right by now. You know, these are like all of the resources that we've been sharing over the last few weeks. Added a couple of more here that I think will be useful to you. Um, we were talking yesterday about being able to set expectations with your customers. We touched on here today as well. Now, Liz pointed out we really need to start telling our, our clients when we think that we're going to be opening again and be giving them clues and signs as to, to when that's going to be happening. Here's a, a download here, and this is uh, by – a, a group of really smart people, Scott Gottlieb, he's in the news a fair amount. He used to be the FDA commissioner and he and a bunch of his partners basically wrote out the steps and the things that we need to be looking for to start opening up the economy. And here's really good information here that you could use in some of your communication. <laughs> and one of the key things that you want to be able to do is for your state to be able to speak to, you know, how the healthcare system is doing. So like if I just go here to Georgia, for instance, we're 12 days away, supposedly peak medical resource uh, usage is going to hit April 20. So that would be something that you could be sharing with your clients now that you're, you, you see that as a, as a tipping point doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be cleaning homes on the 20th, but that would be one of the things that you'd want to see because at that point, you know, hopefully all the PPE that our healthcare workers are, are, are needing at the moment would, 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 would be available and the stay at home orders that are in place in a, in a, in a lot of States should, uh, should be loosening up at that point. So that's just a resource you can use to keep up with what's going on in your state and, and, and share with your clients and, you know, your, your, your cleaning professionals as well, because you certainly want to be including your staff in all of this as well and keeping them, you know, stoked with the idea that, Hey, we're going to be going back to work here pretty soon. And, and this would all be part of that uh, communication as well. So let me copy this. And when I get Joe's, uh, template i'll go ahead and i'll upload that and i'll put a link here and that'll be available on this page as well which is really awesome i'm looking forward to getting that yeah I'll be great. and just um to maybe close out this call today tom or this facebook live maybe we could just have um a few minutes to of silence before we actually stop the live for Julie McAdoo and her husband, who I'm sure everybody has seen by now has um, passed away from the coronavirus. Maybe just close out that way.
Thank you, guys. Peace, safe, and rest. We'll see you tomorrow at 5.